All right. All right. So determining the research sampling and conduct conducting pilot study. Okay. Am I showing you the right uh, slide? Yes, doctor. Okay. Uh, maybe some of you do not are not do not plan to do field work. Tapi still lah, okay? You have to get good this and you know maybe in future your master or your PhD want to do good work. So at least uh, maybe by that time you you already forgotten what we discussed today but at least you're familiar with some of the terms for uh, sampling. Yeah? Okay so uh, you can look at this chart and you find that sampling methods can be divided into two. Two bigger uh, methods. Yeah? One is called sorry sorry one is called probability sampling method. Eh? Another one is called non-probability sampling method. Okay, don't get confused because uh, different authors may give you kind of different chart. You know, and the items in the chart may also differ. Uh, but most importantly, what uh, remain the same is uh, the nucleus. <laughs> Uh, in the, well, not so much the, the type of sampling method, only probability and non-probability. Okay, now non-probability composed of convenience sampling, judgmental or purposive sampling, uh, snowball sampling, quota sampling. And this uh, uh, probability, for random sampling, uh, I mean, looking from the name, also you can gauge eh? simple random sampling, just like you know, pick up whoever <laughs> you think can eh? answer, but that depends on the title of the research. Normally, simple random sampling ni for marketing purpose lah, kan? Macam you go to the supermarket, kan? Uh, and then, tapi yang tu, the purpose of it is to sell. Anyway, sama lah juga actually, yeah. So for example, you will say, okay, take this, this is very new, this is brand and we have promo and then you can, okay lah, you can taste and then say, hmm, okay lah, I buy one. <laughs> Most of the time, I get three again. So this is simple random sampling method. So you tak do, you do not have specific idea lah. I mean, if you want to think about the, you want to like um, conceptualize, you can how, uh, so the choices of sample uh, can be made. You can think at this time, kalau, you know, probability simple random sampling. So, you know that in this manner, um, you do, you, everybody has the chance. That's why it is called probability. Everybody has the chance to be the respondent. You have not zoomed to any particular you know, uh, respond okay. Can you follow? Okay, cluster sampling, systematic sampling, and certified random sampling. Certified random sampling is one of the most used um, sampling method. Okay, I mean, uh, before I forgot also what sampling means. Sampling means your respondent. Yeah, your respondent. Okay, so you can see just now there are certain items which is uh, not in the chart, eh, but so that's why I decided to what you call that to include the two um, chart, eh, this one and the other one, so you are familiar with um, you are familiar with the term. And for example, here under probability you have simple random sampling, you have systematic random sampling, you have stratified random sampling, cluster random sampling, okay? and this is together as multi-stage, multi-stage, uh, multi uh, uh, sampling method. And then non-probability. Non-probability, it means that uh, 
um, there is no equal chances lah for everyone. <laughs> Why? Because you decide your sample. And say for example, you want to interview the officer from religious department. Okay. Uh, and then uh, anybody lah how uh, that is uh, intended. So that is called purpose lah. So basically there is no probability about them being your uh, that that is no probability. Ah, yeah, there is no probability they they will become your respondent. Maksudnya, it means that they will surely. It's not probable kind of uh, thing to accept them as your respondent. It's it's kind of a must to have them. This is what non probability. Uh, when I first studied sampling, I also got so mixed up because. Non probable is supposedly uh, very fair and easy, like kan? very wide, can open. Nah, tapi actually tak. Non probability is that when you have certain target uh, in your uh, research and or target group in your research, a certain sample in your research. Okay, let me think. Okay. Right, never mind. Okay. If I want to go to okay. mm. I think we will discuss uh, the sample two one by one. Okay, uh for the kind of definition of uh, sampling lah, kan? uh Probability sampling. Okay. Probability sampling is a sampling technique in which the subjects of the population get an equal opportunity to be selected as a representative sample. Uh, so this is what probability sample. For example, you go to an apartment and you just like all of them have the opportunity. Just a matter of when I knock at the door, whether they open or not. <laughs> or whether they are interested. They open but they are not interested to participate then. Okay, so it's probability. Yeah. Uh, Non-probability is a method of sampling wherein it is not known that which individual. Sorry, sorry, this is not non-probability. Eh? Oh, I thought I have corrected this just now. This is probability. Yeah? So probability sampling is a method of sampling wherein it is not known that which individual from the population will be selected as sample. So probability ni you do not know because you know, probable, probable. Yeah, everybody is, uh, every man in that apartment is your potential kind of sample. Yeah. Okay, non-probability sampling is a sampling technique where the odds of any me member being selected, for example, cannot be calculated. In addition, probability sampling involves random selection, while non-probability sampling does not. Uh, does not take random sampling. Method. It relies on the subjective adjustment of the researcher. Non-probability sampling is also associated with case study, research design, and quality research. Okay, case study, for example, non-probability. Because... You want to study case and definitely there are certain people that will become your the subject matter of your research. Right? So you like you know already who will be the respondent. And maybe the politicians, certain politicians and then the uh, those who were under him by uh, political appointment or government appointment. Okay. So basically, you have already identified the respondents and uh, the rest that you need to do is to uh, administer the research lah. Either you want to 
draft give them the draft of question uh, give them the questionnaire but that questionnaire has to be piloted lah uh, you cannot give questionnaire atau questions to the respondents if they have not been piloted okay i will explain to you what pilot uh, study is all about uh, perceive or judgmental sampling is a strategy in which particular setting persons or events are selected deliberately in order to provide important context. Yeah, uh, this is when uh, you purpose judgmental sampling. So this is uh, let's take a look at purposes non probability test. Can you see this purposive? Huh? So this is like. Uh, a strategy in which particular setting, purpose or events are selected deliberately in order to provide important information that cannot be obtained from other choices. Hmm. To provide information that cannot be, yeah. So you have to take those uh, items as your respondent, those items to people, to uh, committee ke kan? because if you ask somebody else then uh, these people then you may not be able to get the first hand data now determining the sample size ah. so sample size are the two uh, random and non-random okay but, uh, okay never mind let's see Alamak, this is kind of repetition, eh? random, uh, yeah, not really because uh, this is, uh, what is it called, convenient, what uh, is Eh, hey, mana dia tadi? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Random and not random, okay. Uh, random summary refers to the method in which each of the sampling units uh, has a non-zero probability, non-zero probability of being selected into the sample. Non-random sampling is a method of sampling where it is not known that each individual from the population will be selected as a sample. So I hope you read this again and again, uh, uh, this uh, definition or depreciation, yeah? because uh, it is essential to know the uh, nature of your respondents. Uh, so the data you gather are reliable. Right. Okay, sampling process. Okay, defining the population of concern. For example, if it is in Gomba, how many kampung do we have in Gomba? Uh, I mean, a little bit of their yeah, background, eh? and then what is the sign now? Okay, six. Um, specifying a sampling frame, okay, a list of. So, uh, maybe uh, you need to identify who you would like to uh, interview, for example. Young people, ke, school children, ke, teachers, ke, like that. all the units from which a sample is drawn. I think this is typo. Specifying the sampling method for selecting items or even from the from the frame. Yeah, when you already identify the sampling. Uh, so you know already what are the types of uh, research sampling can and then you uh, identify that can that method <laughs> determining that yes determining the sample size like I think this afternoon I went uh, my uh, what we didn't Madam, can we just have uh, 30 respondents? And then I say, okay, let me check. 30 respondents too is like one book, one page and a half. 
is this your original work or and then he said well this is not original work okay if it is uh, then um, you need to uh, gauge uh, the, the sample you need to gauge the sample okay where will let's determine the sample size yeah? mm, like uh, what i mean by original uh, well not really original work lah like mm, whether there have been any research before that does or did the same research except that maybe slightly different in terms of you know sub object and sub question but then uh you you see that or oh, that as that scholar write or did research on particular topic that is same with mine yeah? but uh, he has Publish there, yeah, yeah? and uh, and you want like to benefit from uh, his sample, and okay. so this is also kind of the meaning the sample design. Implementing the sampling plan, yeah, it's included in the research design that you can. Yeah? How do you plan your sample to be? Kalau it's homogeneous, okay lah. Men, women, children, parents, can. but depends on the type. Yeah, depends on. Um, identify data which can be something and data collecting. Ah, you know that is the next process. Identify data which can be collected. Need to look at the research question again whether those are reliable questions. Okay, now the rest of uh, definition of sample and method. Simple random sample. Actually, simple simple random sampling ni ni medium expect. It's a subset of individuals chosen from a large set. Each individual is chosen randomly and entirely by chance and it is categorized as a probability plan. So, macam mana tu? Can you relate to me? How is this? Give an example. Uh, let's do some uh, some exercise at this point of time. Very tired and I feel like I'm shouting now. <laughs> Lost of voice already. Um, uh, chosen from a larger set of population, sets of individuals. Each individual is chosen randomly and tiny by chance. Okay. Like I said earlier, if you go to apartment, can you just like knock on the door and whoever lah kan? Okay. This is simple random sampling. Systematic sampling is a statistical method involving the selections of elements from an ordered sampling frame. So, that much it is. Okay, this is very good example. Supermarket wants to buy, to study buying habits of their customers. Then using systematic sampling, they can choose every 10 or 15 customer <laughs> entering the supermarket and conduct the study. So collecting of data can also be done in this manner. Well, I am not sure if I will call that. Okay, but this is only example lah. Stratified random sampling. Okay. Stratified random sampling is a method of sampling from a population when subpopulations within, within an overall population vary. It is advantageous to sample each subpopulation uh, independently by stratifying them. Certification is the process of dividing members of the population into homogeneous or subgroups before sampling. Okay. So what are the examples of this one? Eh? Uh, so this is uh, uh, the group who 
the advantage is to sample each subpopulation independently by stratifying. Oh, dividing members of the population. Okay. Stratification is the process of dividing members of the population. How the meaning does not come to me at the point at this point of time. Um, so everybody members of the population to one more than three, four, ten. Wow, you really need to have a good number of samples then. Someone has stratified. I can look for the example. The population is the homeless. Um, when I encounter an example, clear example, I mean, I have something in mind about certified uh, random sampling, but I'm not sure whether this is exactly what certified uh, sampling is. Okay, and the last one, I think the last one is, okay, I don't like legal. Okay, so some process sampling that is done. Uh, the population units belong to some natural group, for instance, like a school, okay, natural uh, grouping of school children, okay? so ada lah dia punya cluster dia, uh, like cluster COVID. <laughs> Both are sampling. To represent different classes that may exist uh, in a given population, it is commonly used in public opinion or market. The one that is uh, used by the supermarket, you know, it's uh, not big. In such a way, the interview is required to ensure certified, you know, the big difference between this and certified is the lack of the value of the election in quota. Lack of well defined rules. Yeah, yeah. So, quota sampling, even though you zoom to certain quota, but you didn't have uh, what you call that. Uh, put the proper guideline on the sample. Okay. At hazard, uh, it's very random selection. Like for example, um, the supermarket kan sometimes they pack and they do the present. But not all the items are good. But anyway, it's the thought that comes. Okay. A good sample is the true representative of the population corresponding to its property. Okay, characteristics of a good sample, the true representative of the population, a good sample is the true representative of the population corresponding to its property. The population is known as aggregate of certain properties and sample is called sub-aggregate of the universe. So, like for example, you want to interview people in the apartment, the population is like uh, maybe 30, but uh, say for example, say the population number is 200 and you want only 30, yeah, but then you, maybe you aggregate and you arrange lah, maybe level 1, you will get 4 from level 1 from level 2 so on and so forth until you get 300 so this is like uh, uh, you know that sample with uh, uh, what you call that uh, the aggregated or you kind of plan uh, how many and so the, the important the important is that not only that you want to justify the number but if you are Especially uh, doing research on some studies. Give us an example. Eh? Mm. How do I give an example? Mm. Okay. The population is known as a get of certain properties and sample is cause I get. Okay, let me let me take my research like easier for me to make sense of the uh, the number. So say for example, yeah, I think now I can remember. We want six hundred from Kuala Lumpur, yeah, Kuala Lumpur, and then we divided Kuala Lumpur into twelve zones. 
and then uh, the respondents go to this zone and even narrow it down. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I mean, that's kind of true representative of that population uh, I mean, in that zone. Yeah? Uh, so, you know, you cascade, cascade. I think you kind of you get the core uh, number uh, that represents the population. Right? Uh, so, that is good sample. Of course, good sample is free from bias. Yeah, so does not permit prejudices, the learning, and preconception imaginations of the investigator to influence it. So, right. like for example, um, you as the investigator or researcher, you come to a place where you they have lack of information about certain issue, kan? And then you um, uh, you kind of give them leading questions. Leading questions. What are leading questions? Muaz? Muaz? My best friends are here already. Okay. So the leading question, like for example, the respondents will have to answer your question the way you want them. So this is bias and it is not good. Yeah. Okay, a good sample is an objective one. It refers to objectivity in... Uh, actually, the word objective here also means from bias. Muaz? 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 A good sample maintains accuracy. It yields an accurate estimate or statistic and does not involve error. Uh, so, uh, if, if it involves statistic, then um, the number has to be reasonable. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, accurate. But, uh, with, uh, like for example, if you are, uh, let me give example for quality. Okay. Accuracy in terms of uh, qualitative study. Okay. Uh, the right group, uh, the right people to respond to the question. So otherwise, uh, if you don't have that, then it's regarded as outlier. And they are like uh, outside of your, of the needed sample. Okay. So, uh, in statistics, okay, let me give you an example. In our research, we found that a number of research questionnaires too, we found that at least one person answering three uh, research uh, that survey. And the way the answer is just like just tick, 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 tick. So we have suspicious feeling over the accuracy of that data. So what, what did we do? Of course, we are so frustrated because three, kan? We have to just scrap them off. Okay. A good sample is comprehensive in nature. Yeah. This feature of a sample is closely linked with true representatives. This feature of a sample is closely linked with true representatives. Um, uh, representativeness. Comprehensiveness is a quality of a sample which is controlled by specific purpose of the investigation. A sample may be comprehensive in traits but not be a good representative of the population. Yeah. Um, one of um, our problems in, the, in sampling is uh, we didn't get too many how do I say? We didn't get too many liberals. <laughs> Moaz? Excuse me. Eh?
Okay, I'm sorry class for the intervention. Upstairs, eh? Naik. <laughs> Dia tengah kutir rambut. Uh, okay. So, um, so, for example, uh, in our uh, research kan, we want to find if people have different idea about religion, but yelah, we couldn't get the sample that is that liberal. Uh, so, I would say that our sample is not that comprehensive as well. Like if you can interview or can administer the research question to say, for example, sisters in Islam, then uh, it's fit in lah. Yeah. So that is one of the issue lah for our sample. A good sample is also economical from energy, time and money point of view. Of course, when you do research, then you need to approach your sample and you need you know you need time you need to see them you have you need petrol kan you need uh, money right uh, but so uh, you have to have good funding okay i want to remind us who are doing uh, field work uh, you may have to spend some amount from your pocket yeah except that now that we have uh, virtual kan if you conduct interview virtually if the person has the has the connection lah yeah? uh, so you are safe lah and then uh, if you administer this uh, uh, research questionnaire then now also you have like google form or something like that except that you'll find that i mean of course at one point you want the economical aspect of it right but at another point you are torn i mean you are in dilemma because how reliable is the sample right um maybe he's not the one who answer it uh something like that so economical but you are in dilemma about the reliability or the accuracy of the sample. So, subjects of good sample are easily approachable. Yeah? The research tools can be administered on them and data can be collected easily. Yeah? So, uh, it means that uh, you, can, you can find them. Like for example, if you want to conduct a research Nak makan kat mana? Nak makan kat rumah? Bukan makan dengan dia orang. Kenapa tak gang? Oh, wah, buat apa kita? Okay, so um, Okay, so for example, I give you example If you want to write uh, This happened in the last semester uh, First semester before this semester One student want to write a about homosexual practices on campus. Ah, so I said to her, how you going to collect the data? Ada, uh, are you, is this, I mean, she, a sister can, is writing on this topic and then I said, how are you going to collect the data? Will you be able to get the person who practice homosexuality? She said to, I asked them. And then I asked the sister and then the sister said, well, I, uh, can she can get the information from the doctor so it's secondary secondary material lah secondary data not not primary not from the person her, himself so i don't know but she insisted that she wanted to do research on that issue so i couldn't help but i just assist in her in completing the research proposal but I do not know whether she took up that research or not. Yeah. Uh, um, Alright, so uh, the size of good sample is such that it yields an accurate result. The probability of error can be estimated. Uh, well, actually, uh, for statistics, yeah, for research question, yeah, I Recently, I encountered Dr. Osman Talib uh, discussion about why 13 is um, good, uh, is reasonable number or acceptable number, not reasonable lah. Acceptable number to 
administer questionnaire. So, for example, you want to do uh, quantitative research, can and you on you want to administer research questionnaire, uh, questionnaire, lah. and you have you you target for thirty, <laughs> thirty very little, can but. Uh, in statistic, 30 is acceptable number. <laughs> uh, 30 is acceptable number. Why is that? Uh, what is the justification for 30? Actually, there is there is reason why the 30 is acceptable because um, okay, Faris, because um, it it was found. It's quite difficult also for me to communicate to you. It was found that after a number of uh, quantitative research quantitative research conducted, they found that by 30, uh, almost all research uh, showed the similar trend of answers from the respondent. Uh, and how did they uh, measure that? Of course, mathematics lah. Eh? Uh, because statistic, you know, kan? The, a certain formulation. So, by 30, I mean, uh, if you have 30, they found that at, Every 30 respondents uh, will show the same trend in the answers. So the probability of error is slim. It's slim or slimmer if you have 30. In comparison, if you have 5 or 10. Right? A good sample makes the research work more feasible. Uh, definitely. Yeah? Because... Uh, it is easy for you to reach out to that sample. A good sample has the practicality for research. Situ practicability, <laughs> practicability for research situation. Yeah, for example, kan, uh, like uh, the the one that uh, one sister who wishes to study the homosexual practices on campus, to kan, tak practical lah because. It's very difficult to get someone to notify that he practice practices sex, uh, homosexuality, yeah, especially I I incident. And then if even if the student said that she will go to the secondary no, secondary data in terms of the reliability of his, I mean one is a question of confidentiality because the clinic the doctor is not supposed to expose the uh, I mean, it's confidential uh, information, right? Uh, one. And then secondly, these are, I mean, the, when the doctor reported, uh, he is regarded as secondary. Uh, secondary. Uh, secondary lah, not primary data. So, it reduces the credibility of your uh, research, yeah? Okay, can you still bear with me? What is the time now? 6.34. Alright, so I think that's about it. I will stop here because we let's allow us to prepare for iftar. And inshallah, the remaining I will uh, I will record in another record and then I will share in class. Inshallah.